What guys, and welcome back to Star Wars Review. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Chapter 3, The Sin of Star Wars The Mandalorian. So yeah, um, I'm a little bit late on it. I, I pretty much had the episode written out Saturday. I had time, but I just didn't, you know, I, I just wasn't feeling it, so I didn't record it. Now, it's Tuesday, getting it out. I promise Chapter 4's review will be out and at the latest Sunday. But, um, yeah. Anyways, so Chapter 3, The Sin, was directed by Deborah Chow, who will be the showrunner for the Obi-Wan series, um, which I believe was going to come out in, like, 2021, maybe. Um, and the episode was, once again, written by John... Favreau, I, I, I believe there's an episode coming up, or a few that won't be run by him, I believe, um, I believe it's episode 5 and 6, uh, I believe, I could be wrong, let me actually, um, look this up, just, you know, so I don't look like an idiot, um, Next week's, I was saying next week's will be directed by, or not next week's, but this upcoming week will be directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah, cha chapter 5 will be directed and written by Dave Filoni, and then ch chapter 6 will once be, again be uh, directed by Rick F Famua, and he'll write it alongside Christopher Yost, who I believe wrote some episodes of Rebels. Could be wrong though. I believe it's Rebels he wrote. Um, but yeah, uh, I like this episode a good bit. Um, I didn't like it as much as Chapter 2, but I still really enjoyed it. Um, there's one thing I really, really liked. Uh, which was this, you know, you know, I, I don't know how to describe it. Just seeing that um, in live action was great. But I'll be talking about that, and that actually won't be till like, near the end of the video. I'm going to try to get this, make this one not as long, but uh, yeah, I'm doubtful. Um, I'm quite the rambler, so I'll ramble on about something. But, um, yeah, uh, obviously if you've watched the episode, you know what that scene is. Um, I, I guess it's really only crazy and cool if you're, like, a... And the Mandalorian stuff and Clone Wars and Rebels. Uh, if you're just kind of you know, didn't watch that, then it probably won't be as crazy. And, and if you're not as big a fan as uh, some of that stuff, that probably gives probably give it away a little bit. But um, if you haven't watched it, but um, yeah, note I at this rate I will be talking about spoilers for the first two episodes. At any moment, so if you haven't watched the first two episodes, then uh, don't watch this. But, um, yeah, so I'll be talking about spoilers in the non spoiler part for chapters one and two. So, yeah, um, but you know, anyways, I'm gonna get some non spoiler stuff for the episodes and the characters, um. Why not? He's Mandalorian. So I saw new uh, Grammy as a uh, character. Um, if you know, go see flashback stuff and whatnot. It's yeah, starting to grow on me. Obviously, once you know, there's more of a connection to the character, we. Once we learn his name and obviously see his face, which once you see it, we know what he's gonna look like. Because uh, you know, he's played by Pedro Pascal, and we know who he looks like, so it's obvious what he's gonna look, look like if he eventually takes the helmet off. But, um, yeah. They know I. Sort of really like him. He's 
Uh, I, I guess he could call him an anti-hero, but, um, no. Uh, he, he's definitely, he definitely leans a lot more into the hero kind of side, but then again, I guess, uh, I, I guess he's an anti-hero, because, um, Hogan will kill people and whatnot. Um, He's definitely a uh, softy inside, which obviously was revealed in this episode. Uh, but yeah, and obviously Werner Herzog's character client returns. Um, still not much to him. I, there's a little bit in there. To be honest, I think I didn't actually write any of that down in my spoiler part. I kind of forgot about it. I'm just remembering it now, and I forgot to write it down. But, um, oh, I don't remember to mention it, but, yeah. Um, I'll see Baby Yoda, or whatever, uh, his or her name is. I don't know, but they're back, and just, you know, just great. I was thinking really, yeah, it's just a cute factor of Baby Yoda, let's, um... Really, yeah, you know, obviously the connection between Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian is what's the big part. Um, yeah, obviously some of the other characters return, like Grief Karga, which, yeah, kind of get a little bit more of his character, and kind of how he is and whatnot. Yeah, um, other than that, um. Some of the Mandalorian characters return, and oh, which I'll, I've seen the armor, which is really the only one we fully knew beforehand. Obviously, returns, and or not obviously, but does return. But obviously, if I mentioned that the Mandalorian return is like the main Mandalorian, Mandalorian they showed in the, uh, the underground Mandalorian civilization, but um. Yeah, uh, so yeah, uh, you know, there's more than that, kind of spoiler-ish, so yeah, and I guess other stuff, like, obviously the score, I've really been liking it a lot, um, um, so yeah, the score, I've been, yeah, I still need to listen to one for, like, soundtrack, I guess you could say, for, uh, this episode because I've been releasing one for each episode. It's not nice, but um, yeah, um, obviously the, the score is composed by Ludwig Gorenson, who I believe just uh, won an Oscar for best score um, back in uh, February for score for Black Panther. But yeah, it, it, it's great. I've really been liking the score. Um, so yeah. I'm seeing visual, but most of the stuff is I'm just repeating from previous episodes, like visuals, like I said, some stuff, so it's definitely TV, not a movie, but some stuff really does look great. Um, you know, it's like the episode is a lot more action heavy than um, the previous two, and it really did feel like it, you know action you'd seen in the movies, um, and whatnot, it kind of felt like John, John Wick, uh, if you watched John Wick movies, a little bit, um, obviously, not for plot, and I guess kind of, one thing kind of felt like a, was more plot oriented, felt like John Wick to me, um, yeah, one thing about John Wick movies is the plot, there's so much to it, kind of, over the course of three movies, I feel like the plot moves in what, I feel like, half of a normal movie, but, um, well, not normal, but, like, more story-oriented, but, you know, also moves are action movies, which, yeah, uh, I, I will say, action is my favorite genre, um, 
I'm not the biggest action movie fan. So, um, uh, I, I like movies and series, I guess now, not TV shows, because like, a lot of them are on streaming services and, uh, you know, series. Um, I'm more in for characters and story and whatnot in the world. So I'm not more than action, but, um, anyways, talking about story, I guess we can do it. It was a little... I guess it's a little bit more predictable. I guess I, I would say that through the course of the three episodes, it's been a, a little bit more predictable than some other stuff. And the episode had a lot. Like, I, I, I kind of knew what was going to happen. Um, and whatnot. Which. Obviously, that's not a bad thing, but when, when when you figure it out before it happens, it kind of takes a little bit out of it, out of moments and whatnot. Um, so, yeah. You know. Still thought it was good. Moved along at a nice pace. And why not? And I guess another thing I should mention is kind of directing. Um, I, once again, thought it was great. Um, you know, I thought it was a well directed episode and um, excites me for the Obi Wan series. Um, See, I, one thing I kind of hope for the Obi Wan series is that it's not very action heavy, and the action is, you know, very small and this not as big as some stuff in this episode <laughs> is kind of what I'm hoping for. But obviously, that's really nothing. That's very Minor. I still really like the parts in this episode when we're in action. Um, and before I guess I get into spoilers, um, you know, well, I enjoyed the episode. Like I said earlier, didn't like it as much as uh, episode two, but I, I, I liked it more than episode one, but um, yeah, like I said. Really, just when I said earlier, you know, I I like story, even though it was a little bit more predictable, and thought it was well directed, and I really like character score and whatnot. You know, obviously, a lot more action heavy. But yeah, anyways, you know, some spoiler stuff, which um kind of break the episode down. Like I did. You know, when there's stuff I want to talk about, I'll stop and, you know, talk about it. And the episode starts with Amanda flying into, or flying in space as Baby Yoda wakes up. Starts to mess with a little knob thingy on the ship. I don't remember what it's used for, but um, Baby Yoda takes a little like, ball off the top of the stick knob. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, and then the Mandalorian takes it off of him and says, "Oh, that's you know, not a toy." But um, yeah, and then all of a sudden you're returning to the planet where you know where like the Mandalorian hideout is, and where like Grief Karga is. But um, obviously, like before that, when he's landing, Grief Karga has like a message or shows up on the hog and whatnot ship and. Uh, and so to take Baby Yoda straight to uh, the client. Um, so yeah, which the Mando goes to um, the client, who was played by Werner Herzog, uh, and gives him Baby Yoda. And then 
fine because in Beskar, he was promised in the container. The container is um, back in, you know, around this time last year when they're filming. John Favreau posted an image of, uh, like, the um, thing uh, Will Rowe Hood was carrying in Empire Strikes Back. It's like a movie, it's like an ice cream maker. Um, there was a ice cream maker used as a prop and whatnot. That's what the uh, container was. So, yeah, I'll see. Well, Rohan was carrying something in that container. You know, I guess it's more of like a a safe, really. Um, which, yeah, obviously the Mandalorian. Um, and the Mandalorian asked. Um, Talking what he's gonna do with Baby Yoda, and he says, you know, that's very uh, like uncharacteristic. I can't say that word. Um, more bounty hunter and whatnot, and kind of gets roles, which is but um, uh, is the case, but yeah. But the Mandalorian takes the best car and goes back to the Mandalorian hideout, he goes to the armorer Mandalorian with all the best car and whatnot. Um, some other Mandalorians come up, and one was kind of mad that the Mandalorian worked uh, with the Empire. Um, I, I believe the Mandalorian was voiced by John Favreau. To be honest, when I was watching it, I didn't catch it until I saw people uh, talking about it later. I haven't rewatched the episode, so I I don't know what I would have, I would have to rewatch the scene and see if I can. Hear his voice because I see he has a pretty distinct voice, in my opinion. I can, you know, yeah, I can solo when he did the voice of um, the character he did in solo. I caught, caught that right away, but yeah, um, but that man Warren is mad at. Mandalorian for uh, working with the Empire. Um, that, that Mandalorian actually did get a name in the credits, which was interesting. His name is Paz Vizsla, which um, I remember from the Clone Wars, uh, the character John Favreau voiced Pre Vizsla. Um, I don't know if he related in some way. So, yeah. Um, but, you know. Anyways, he's mad the Mandalorian worked with the Empire, and that the best car had the like Imperial oh, logo and insignia like pressed into them and whatnot. So we get into a little bit of brawl, and then the armor Mandalorian says something, and then like you know, says this is the way, and then they all say. Saying and this is the way, kind of a bit of a more meme now. Uh, like when mm, Kill says, uh, I have spoken, and then the trailer, the Mandalorian says, like, yeah, good. All those come out, yeah, kind of more, you know, memed lines. Yeah, and anyways, and the armor Mandalorian, um, when I asked, uh, what happened to his armor, and the Mandalorian says it was destroyed by the Mudhorn, and the armor asks if, uh, that should be his signet things, thingy, but, um, the Mandalorian refuses because it wasn't a noble kill, so yeah, but, um, anyways, and the armor Mandalorian makes new armor for the Mando. Mandalorian, the Mandalorian makes new armor from the Mandalorian, um, just like um, Episode One when he made the like shoulder pad. There's some more flashback scenes, and there are a lot more. Um, can't think of the word, but uh, like you can tell what's going on more, and the scenes are a bit longer. But non, as the Mandalorian. Uh, parents putting him in the uh, I, I 
can't think of the name, but it was like a container or something thingy. I, I don't know, but um, yeah, and then a super bad droid opens it up, and then you know, like armor Mandalorian does like a round bang thingy and it cuts back. So, um, I would assume next time Mandalorian gets some upgrades to his armor, uh, I'd see the rest of the scene. I've been people, you know, seeing people like speculate that, and you know, the person who says them is like Yoda, or like an Obi Wan, or someone like that, or a Jedi. I don't think that at all. I I, I think it's gonna be a Mandalorian, because um, the best car wasn't used for the um, Mandalorian's new armor was saved for the Foundlings, which I do think the Mandalorian is a Foundling, so I. I Assume a Mandalorian saves them and not a Jedi, which the Mandalorian doesn't know what the Force is, so. Which one that was obviously revealed in episode 2. So, yeah, I. I don't think a Jedi saved them. Um, so, and also the armor makes him a new weapon called Whistling Birds, um, which I'll talk about that later because it comes back up. But yeah, and then he goes back to, um, Mandalorian goes back to Groove Karga with his brand new shiny armor. And, um, let's see, goes for a uh, new job, but Karga reveals that pretty much all the bounty hunters in the, I don't know, the bounty hunter hangout, I don't know what to call it, uh, area, cantina, place, and. Um, had the uh, Baby Yoda bounty, and um, we'll see, Mandalorian's great, he's the best bounty hunter now, because he completed the job, and um, yeah, when the Mandalorian wants a new job, and Gargan gives it to him, which, bounty, thing is um, the son of a Mon Calamari nobleman, um, which, the Mon Calamari was on the planet Karnak, Pretty sure that's a brand new planet I've never been mentioned before. So yeah, um Uh so yeah. So Mandalorian accepts it and then goes back to his ship. Now right when he's about to lift off he reaches over to the little knob stick thingy what Baby Yoda was playing with earlier. That, you know. And then he shuts down the ship and goes back to the Imperial hangout place. Baby Yoda he sees the little crib thingy and like the garbage and whatnot. And he also like spies in um, on the doctor and the client. I believe the doctor's name is like Pershing or something. Um, and they're kind of talking about some stuff and um, leave. Fine, where Herzog says he doesn't care if it's dead or not, so. And then Mandalorian goes in, like he sets some like detonators and whatnot, and then he goes up to the door, and then a little, like the eye stick thingy, what's like, the scene at like Chop's Palace in Return of the Jedi. Um, you know, he like, busts that, and stormtroopers come out, he beats. Beats him up, I and you know, then he goes through the place, killing and beating up a bunch of stormtroopers. Then he gets there with Baby Yoda, and, and Pershing, the doctor guy, whatever his, yeah, I believe his name is Pershing, um, you know, says that, I believe then he reveals that Baby Yoda is a he, but, um, says he was keeping Baby Yoda alive, um, so, then the Mandalorian spares him. So, yeah, and then the Mandalorian, when he's leaving, um, four stormtroopers come in and surround him. And he uses the whistling bird attack weapon thingy, which, like, shoots out these little, like, I don't know, tracking dart thingies, you could call them. And, like, hit all, storm, all four stormtroopers and, like, kills them with, like, an explosion and whatnot. 
pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, and then um, I was, like, I was talking about John Wick earlier. This these parts really felt like John Wick. Um, and then next part felt like more kind of like more, not an act like actiony part of John Wick, but um, so like the Mandalorian is leaving and like when he's walking around, he sees all the like, a bunch of bounty hunters and their bounty hunter tracker thingies they got from the Baby Yoda bounty like, starting to go off which it, it kind of felt like I didn't see in like, like John Wick Chapter 2 and maybe John Wick Chapter 3 and um well like in, in John Wick Chapter 2 I believe he gets like I, I, I can't remember exactly but I the scene where he gets like a bounty on his head and whatnot. So like he's walking around like you know, on, like high alert and whatnot and waiting to see who's gonna attack him and then at the end of John Wick chapter two and like start of John Wick chapter three when he comes excommunicado he's like walking through New York and whatnot and, and like high alert wondering who's gonna you know, attack him and whatnot. That that's what the scene Felt like most to me, but um, anyways, then the Mandalorian he runs into Grief Karga and a bunch of other bounty hunters. Um, and like that main area is like him you know, where he like parks where the Mandalorian lands the ship. It's kind of area right in the town, it's right there. And so, get into kind of a big fight, and the Mandalorian starts using all his. I think I don't think he used Whistling Bird, so, but, um, you know, he uses his rifle, with, like, disintegrates the guys, uses the fire, but, um, then he, like, this part really had, like, that western kind of vibe to it, um, the Mandalorian jumps in his, like, little cart thing, what's being, you know, driven by an astromech droid, which really feels like, you know, like, in a western, like, the cowboy jumping into the car, and then there's the horse, you know, and then he, like, yells out, start going, um, which the Mandalorian does, and then Karga shoots the droid, and, like, you know, like, the Western, like, saying, Tombo jumps in, yells at the horse, and someone shoots the horse. Uh, so, yeah, it, definitely, you could definitely really feel that, like, the, and this tell, you know, like, Western kind of feel to it there. Um, but, yeah, and then it seems like, Mandalorian, he's not going to make it out. Then all the other Mandalorians come to the rescue, flying on their jetpack, shooting a bunch of the bounty hunters and whatnot, allowing the Mandalorian baby to get away back to his ship. But yeah, that scene right there will. That was just great. <laughs> Never would have thought I'd see that in a live act action like that. Obviously we see Mandalorian uh or quote unquote Mandalorians in live action with Jenga Fett and Boba Fett. And I've seen on the the Mandalorian, but um never thought we were seeing like the stuff from the Clone Wars and Rebels. There's a bunch of Mandalorians just on jetpacks flying around and some cool stuff and whatnot. No, we never thought we were on to see that in Live action. Um, so yeah, that, that was my favorite scene of the episode. There. Um, <coughs> but yeah, anyways, as uh, the main Lord gets back to his ship, Karga is waiting there for him and confronts him. Um, kind of talk for a moment, but main Lord shoots him in the chest. Um, I guess I forgot to mention this earlier. When um, Mandalorian goes back to him to get a job, he talks about how he's rich and shows some best guard the client gave him in his, like, you know, kind of front pocket area, which that's where the Mandalorian shoots him, so it doesn't kill him. Uh, but it knocks him out of the ship, and then, you know, the Mandalorian flies away. Yeah, um, and when he's flying away, he unscrews a little knob thing and <laughs> gives the baby Yoda, which I, it's 
not that I don't wanna keep and whatnot. And it also um I don't know, so but um then next scene shows the big Mando dude who was in the credits revealed to be named Paz Fizzla, except earlier. You know, kinda like give him the salute and whatnot. Seems a little weird, but uh you know, because he's obviously like the Mandalorian's flying away in the ship and Paz Vizsla is on the jetpack. But the Mandalorian remarks that he needs to get one of those hoes referring to the jetpack. So yeah, obviously if you watch trailers you know the outcome of that. But um yeah, uh it was a good episode. I liked it. Um like I said earlier, a lot more action heavy, um, <clears throat> and but not obviously the Mandalorians fighting at the end was great. I really like that. You know, I you, you you could kind of see it coming a little, but yeah, um, it it still didn't take away that much from the scene. I'm seeing, like, yep. well, once he knew, he you know, gave baby Huda back to the, uh, to the Imperials, Imperial hangout place, um, to the client. He, he, you knew that he was going to go back for baby Yoda. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Also, the Paz Vizsla, like I said, was like, voiced by John Favreau and whatnot. Um, so that's cool. And that's why, like, the th third or fourth Star Wars character he's played now, or really just voiced. Yeah, I actually, I think he's actually physically played a, a Star Wars character yet. He's only voiced them. Um, so yeah, but yeah, uh, overall, like I said, I like the episode, and not, uh, that's good, like I said, how I would rank the episodes is chapter two, this episode chapter three, and then chapter one, the bottom, um, and whatnot, but I still really liked all three episodes. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see when, uh, Deborah Chow's next episode. Also excited to see what, uh, Rick Famula's next episode, too. Um, you know, I'm real interested to see what, uh, bring. Um, and obviously next week's episode is directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. You know, or not next week. It's I'm recording it the week it comes out, so next episode, uh will be um yeah, I'm, I'm liking the series a good bit so far. Uh if it continues going out, it's going on, I would say it's definitely I'm like Probably say my like, right now where I'd rank it from like the Disney era stuff. I'd probably rank it fifth or sixth um, total of everything. But I, you know, if it keeps going this way, definitely I get up there. Um, but yeah. Uh, obviously, if you don't include movies, I know probably it's probably like third, uh, only behind like. Rebels and um, uh, Lost Stars. I really like that book, so I probably I probably rank that number one if you don't count movies. Um, but yeah. Anyways, the episode I do need to grade it. I'm gonna give it an A minus. Uh, so yeah, right in the middle of where I graded chapters one to two. But um, yeah. Anyways. I do hope to get the chapter four review. Um, if I'm, you know, I'm really on it, I'll get it out Friday. But I do.
do want to get it out Saturday or Sunday. You know, Sunday at the latest. Um, yeah. Um, before this video, I believe I I wanted to get the. Uh, hopefully, I got part three of the Jedi Fallen Order playthrough out. The next video will be part four of the Jedi Fallen Order playthrough, and I'll probably be tomorrow morning. Um, hopefully, I can get the Empire Strikes Back review out tomorrow also. But if not, Thursday I'll have the Empire Strikes Back review and the Return of the Jedi review. So yeah. Um, anyways. Uh, yeah, this has been Star Wars Review, and this, right now, the file's at 41 minutes, which, um, uh, there's some parts where I do need to cut out to it, it should be, like, around 30-some, so it didn't do what I wanted to do and make it short, I kind of talked a good bit, and now I'm keeping rambling on, which I'm just gonna end it off here, I've been Star Wars Review, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. They said you were coming. They said you were the best in the Parsec.